my goodness, it's a feast tonight. You hungry, Kai? Here, I'll get a piece of meat for you. A building at the Lotus Riverside Complex in the Ming Hong District collapsed, killing one worker on site. The reason for the collapse is still under investigation. After the incident, residents of two adjacent... Oh my, the whole thing collapsed. And hotel yeah, were that's horrible. Later that evening. Residents were able to return to their homes the following day as it was confirmed... Du Guang, you don't have these kind of issues, secure, right? ...and there was no signs of additional danger. The investigation into Every the builder cuts corners nowadays. That's why so many buildings collapse. Building du Guang, poor construction quality, quality can kill people. You can't be so careless about it. As believers in God, we need to have principles and a bottom line in what we do. We can't do deceitful, unconscionable things. Back on the 21st of the month, at around 8.30 p.m., a building under construction in the same city... Eat while it's hot. Here, Kai. Have another piece of fish okay. before it gets cold. There were some mistakes that I found hey, here. Hey, Chengdua? Yes? There's someone outside to see you. Oh, okay. Sister Chiang? Come on, we'll talk over there. Sister Chiang, there's a problem in the church. Sister Fong was arrested. What? When did that happen? Last night, Sister Fong and Sister Song were discussing church work and one of their neighbors reported it. What about Sister Song? She escaped. The church arranged a hiding place for her. What do we do about church work? That's what I came to talk to you about. I know we're both familiar with the workings of the church. Can I partner with you to help with some of the workload? That's exactly what I was thinking. Our first task is to protect anyone who might be at risk. Right. Let's go. Recently, thanks to strict surveillance by the Longchang Municipal PSB, 26 members of the Church of Almighty God have been arrested, including five church leaders and eight preachers. To date, over the past two months, the provincial PSB has arrested 152 members of the Church of Almighty God. So late. Where is she? The CCP's arresting Christians everywhere, and she still goes out to meetings. If they find an arrester, who knows what they'll do? And the rest of the family will suffer too. You should go find her. Don't go out and do church duties anymore. We can still read God's word. Let's just have meetings at home. Du Guang, if we give in to the CCP's persecution that we don't even perform our duties, don't we lose our testimony? How is that sincere belief in God? It's only because I'm worried about you. If you spend all day running around like this, and one day the CCP arrests you, they'll torture you. They'll force you to betray God and sell out the church. And if things go wrong, they might kill you. Believing in God in a country ruled by the Communist Party and trying to gain the truth as life and be saved by God without being persecuted, that's impossible. The Lord Jesus said, For whoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Did you forget about that? <sighs> the church leader was arrested, and the church needs someone to do its work. Nothing reveals more whether people have true faith and sincerity. Many brothers and sisters in the church are looking for...
such difficult situations, we should have even more faith in God. There is no force that can stop the work of God. Good night. I'm heading out. Hey, Chung Liu, the boss is buying dinner. Come with us. I can't tonight. I have something to do. Sister Zhang Jia, 23 votes. Sister Chung Nua, 25 votes. Chung Nua and Zhang Jia are the new church leaders. Mm -hmm. Good All right. Mm Mr. Leo, we have a problem. We found cracks in the floor support beam. Which floor? The eighth floor, sir. Let me see it. Where did you see it? Which area? There's one there, there, and there. Here, here, and here. Just three places? Only three at the moment. Let's go take a look. All right. What do we do? The handover is tomorrow. We can't tomorrow. hand it off like this, can we? Can it be fixed? Yes. be delayed hemorrhaging. If it's bad enough, it could endanger his life. How could this happen? You said you both believe in God, right, No. Why did your God protect my Jiguang? Auntie, don't cry. One of the tower cranes snapped without warning and the workload fell. One person was instantly crushed and died. Your husband is lucky to be alive. Wang Ling, take me to him. Mm. He's been unconscious for several days now. We don't know when he will wake up, so it might be best to prepare for the worst. Noah, you need to eat. Dad, I'm not hungry. My girl, stubborn as always. Nua, let's go for a walk. Mom, I know there's a lesson. God is trying to tell me something from De Guang's accident. But I don't understand. I risk getting arrested and sent to jail every time I do my duties. And I worked dawn to dusk in my duties, suffering and expending for God. So how could something like this happen to De Guang? Why didn't God protect him? His mom blames me, and my friends and family mock me constantly. I feel so weak that I don't want to do my duties.
Nua. I can understand how you feel right now. But we can't blame God. People say... Accidents happen, and life is unpredictable. Everyone goes through troubles... at some point in life. And when disaster strikes non-believers, they become helpless and resentful. But as believers in God, even if... we are also in pain, we can pray and rely on God. We feel God's presence, and have comfort and guidance of God's words. Even though it hurts, it doesn't hurt too much. Take Job. During his trials, he didn't blame God. He said, shall we receive good at the hand of God, and not receive evil? Job was honest, upright, and feared God and shunned evil. In all things, he was unwilling to sin with his mouth. God praised Job, calling him a complete person. Nua, don't you fellowship that we should be as Job to live as honest people? Why do you complain now only after what happened to Duo Guang? That's not what an honest person would do. Nua, you haven't slept in two days. Your dad has things handled here. Go home and get some rest. And read God's word, okay? How many believe in me only so I would heal them? How many believe in me only so I would use my powers to drive unclean spirits out of their bodies? And how many believe in me simply to receive peace and joy from me? How many believe in me only to demand from me more material wealth? And how many believe in me just to spend this life in safety? And to be safe and sound in the world to come? How many believe in me only to avoid the suffering of hell and to receive the blessings of heaven? How many believe in me only for temporary comfort? But do not seek to gain anything in the world to come. When I brought down my fury upon man and seized all the joy and peace he originally possessed, man became doubtful. When I gave unto man the suffering of hell and reclaimed the blessings of heaven, man's shame turned into anger. When man asked me to heal him, yet I heeded him not and moreover felt abhorrence for him. Man went far away from me and sought the way of witch doctors and sorcery. When I took away all that man had demanded from me, then all disappeared without a trace. Therefore, I say that man has faith in me because I give too much grace, and there is far too much to gain. Man's relationship with God is merely one of naked self-interest. It is the relationship between the receiver and giver of blessings. To put it plainly, it is like the relationship between employee and employer. The employee works only to receive the rewards bestowed by the employer. In a relationship like this, there is no affection, only a deal. There is no loving and being loved, only charity 
and mercy. There is no understanding, only resignation and deception. There is no intimacy, only a gulf that cannot be bridged. I have held man to a very strict standard all along. If your loyalty comes with intentions and conditions, then I would rather not have any of your so-called loyalty. For I abhor those who deceive me through their intentions and extort me with conditions. I only wish for man to be loyal to none other than me and to do all things for the sake of and to prove that one word, faith. I despise your use of sweetened words to make me rejoice. For I always treat you with complete sincerity. And so I wish for you to also act toward me with a true faith. God's word precisely reveals my true state. It's true, I only feel motivated to do my duties when my family is safe. After De Guang's accident, I blamed God and questioned his will. I see I was only doing my duties to gain his blessings. I expended for God only to benefit myself. It's for gaining blessings and not for satisfying God. Isn't that trying to trade with God? and deceive God? That's not what it means to be an honest person. Why didn't I understand this before? Okay, you can go. You, come here. Do you recognize the person in this photograph? No. How about this one? No. Did you even look at it? I don't know her. What about them? Never seen them. You really don't know them? Never seen them before. Hey, you. Wait. Come here. Let us know if you see them. There's a reward if you do. Okay, got it. Hey, come here. Do you recognize the person you, in this come photograph? Here. This one? I've never seen her before. Do you know the person in this picture? No. Them? She looks familiar. Take a good look. This is... This is Dr. Chung. Where is she? Wasn't that her mother-in-law that just walked by? Damn it! After her! Driver, city hospital. Okay. Guang, Da Guang, are you awake? Da Guang, Da Guang, you're awake. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Why isn't she answering the phone? <sighs> Driver, faster. <laughs> Everything looks normal, but we'll need to keep him overnight. Understood, thank you. It's good he's awake. Yeah, that you have a moment. Thank you. Nuo, where are you? Nuo! Mom, what is it? 
The police are coming to get you. What? You need to get out of here. Captain Wong, we're en route to the hospital. Hurry up. Be good and listen to Grandma, okay? Kai, time to let Mom go. Be safe. Take this. Now go. Get out of here. Let her go, Kai. Quick, don't let her escape. Damn it! Where's Chung Nuo? Temperature looks normal. You're recovering quite well, but you still need more rest. Understood. Thank Thanks. If Dr. Wang is right, you should be able to get up and walk. Want to give it a shot? Yeah. You do? Great. Let's give it a shot. Help me up. <laughs> Dad! De Guang, you're out of bed. Kai's here. I can't imagine how exhausted you are. I'm grateful for the help. I don't think I could have done it without you two. Thank you both. You don't need to thank us, Auntie. It was just the right thing to do. I've been worried about Nuo, too. Don't worry, Auntie. We have brothers and sisters taking care of her. That's right. Kai? Yeah? I'm gonna pick you up tonight. Got it, okay. Take some baozu. You can We're have some now. on the road. Okay. Get some rest. We'll see you soon. Sounds good. Take care. Dad. Bye. <laughs> What's up? When is mom coming back? I really miss her. Mom. <laughs> mom will be back soon. Okay? Mom. Tan, let's sit down here for a minute. All right. Sister Chung, are you feeling any better now? Praise God. After reading God's words and with the fellowship and support of my brothers and sisters, I'm feeling much better. I see that my husband's accident and the CCP's hunt for me revealed my true stature, and I see my corrupt, satanic disposition. Here. Thanks. My faith is too small. When God kept my family safe and everything went well, I thanked God, and I had passion for my duties. But as soon as he tested me, I tried to argue with God and complained. I became someone weak who had absolutely no motivation. I truly lack any obedience to God. Going through trials and being able to see your own corruption and shortcomings means you've already grown. Through prayer and reflection, I saw that in my expenditure, my actions weren't in obedience to God, and I wasn't doing the duties of a creature. I was trying to use my labor to ask for God's blessings to ensure my place in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that just an attempt to trade with God? Isn't it just deception and lie to better serve myself? I realize that in the last few years, I've pursued being an honest person. And even though I lie less now and try to be less deceptive with others, 
I still attempt to trade with God. Isn't that even more serious deceit? I'm not an honest person at all. Let's walk while we talk. Without experiencing trials, we can never understand the impurities in our belief in God. Nor can we understand our deceitful intentions behind attempting to trade with God. There's a saying, time reveals the heart and adversity shows one's true nature. God uses trials to reveal the truth and test people, and makes us see our true essence and just how deeply we are corrupted by Satan. And see whether our faith in God is true or false and whether our hearts are truly honest or deceptive. This is absolutely necessary to know ourselves and pursue being honest people. Yeah. Sister Sung, come in. All right. Everyone is here. Hello, Sister Sung. <sighs> Sister Sung. Sister Chung. I'm really surprised to see you. I know. It's been more than a year. Let's all sit down. I was just told a few days ago that you were in the region. The biggest thing I learned during all of this is just how much there is to learn about being an honest person. Especially after everything that happened, I finally see that to be honest people, we not only have to resolve the lies we tell, but also much resolve the cunning and deception in our hearts. Yes. When we resolve the deception in our hearts, we no longer try to cheat God or trade with God. We can genuinely obey God, and we no longer lie to or try to deceive others. And we do what we say and love others as ourselves. This is what it means to be honest and how we live as a true human. That's yes. right. Thanks be to God. Thanks Amen. be to God. There's still a lot I have to learn about how the deceit in our hearts can be permanently purified to become honest people. Nice. Sister Chung, that's a fantastic topic. To be an honest person, we not only have to resolve the lies we tell, but also resolve the cunning in our hearts. This is extremely difficult to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Lies are easy to discern, but the deceit in our hearts isn't easy to see. The Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Satan's corruption of man is a corruption of our hearts. The satanic poisons in our heart produce satanic natures, which is the source of cunning and deceit. Without the judgment of God's words and revelations of the facts, we would never discover that these lies and deceit come from our satanic natures. Why is it that people are cunning and deceitful? And why, despite believing in God, do we have our own despicable intentions? Why do we attempt to trade with God? Where is the root of all these problems? First, let's watch a few videos of God's Word to learn. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Man's corrupt disposition stems from his being poisoned and trampled upon by Satan from the egregious harm that Satan has inflicted upon his thinking, morality, insight, and sense. It is precisely because these fundamental things of man have been corrupted by Satan and are utterly unlike how God originally created them, that man opposes God and does not understand the truth. For many years, the thoughts that people have relied upon for their survival have been corroding their hearts to the point that they have become treacherous, cowardly, and despicable. Not only do they lack willpower and resolve, but they have also become greedy, arrogant, and willful. They are utterly lacking any resolve that transcends the self, and even more, they don't have a bit of courage to shake off the strictures of these dark influences. People's thoughts and lives are rotten. Their perspectives on believing in God are still unbearably ugly. And even when people speak of their perspectives on belief in God, it is simply unbearable to hear. People are all cowardly, incompetent, despicable, as well as fragile. They do not feel disgust for the forces of darkness 
and they do not feel love for the light and the truth. Instead, they do their utmost to expel them. In the past, when the words of God have not become people's lives, it was Satan's nature that took charge and dominated within them. What specific things were within that nature? This is mainly because of Satan's poison contained within. Satan's poison can be fully expressed with words. For example, if you ask some evildoers why they do something, they will answer, everyone for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This one phrase expresses the root of the problem. The logic of Satan has become people's lives, and no matter what they do, whether it's for some purpose or other, they are only doing it for themselves. People all think that every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This is the life and the philosophy of man, and it also represents man's nature. Every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost. This statement of Satan's is precisely its poison, and when internalized by man, it becomes man's nature. Satan's nature is exposed through this statement. It completely represents it. This poison becomes man's life and becomes the foundation of his existence. Corrupted humanity has been consistently dominated by this for thousands of years. That's so right. true. Yeah. That's yes. right. Uh, God's words really cut deep. They do. These That's words make exactly everything how so I clear. Feel too. Yes, I couldn't agree Thanks more. Be to God. God's words reveal the root of our deceit very clearly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Man is so corrupted by Satan, and all kinds of satanic poisons, logic, and philosophy took root in our hearts long ago. Ideas like every man for himself and the devil take the hindmost, or a hand in power is a hand in one's own fortune. Those who toil with their minds govern others, and those who toil with their hands are the governed. Yeah. Yeah. Or officials are just looking out for number one, not the public. Right. These philosophies become the foundation for how mankind survives. When people live out their lives by these satanic rules, they become ever more arrogant, self-conceited, twisted, cunning, selfish, and greedy. Right. They live by their own goals and intentions, and their interests always come first. They do anything for money, power, and prestige. Yeah. Yeah. And people scheme and deceive one another, to the point that even friends and family cheat and take advantage of one another. Yeah, that's yes. really true. We smile and happily meet with whoever can serve our interests, but the moment our own interests are compromised, we become enemies. Agreed. Is there any humanity and conscience in living like that? Not no, at all. None. There's not. Satan has corrupted mankind for thousands of years, to the point where we're more demon than human. Mankind is becoming even more sinister, leading the world down an evil path. Yes. We have become Satan's descendants. And just as Satan is deceitful and cunning, so too are all people. Just as Satan resists God, so do people. Yes, that's true. This is the truth of mankind's being corrupted by Satan. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's absolutely right. true. If we continue, without undergoing the judgment and chastisement in God's words and being purified and fully saved, we'll all be destroyed. Yes. Yes. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Mankind has been deeply corrupted by Satan. Their hearts are full of cunning and deceit, and their words and deeds only serve their individual intentions and goals. Just like CCP officials, who claim to be the people's servants, wave their banner to serve the people. As they shout, a better life for the people is the goal which we struggle toward. That's right. But have they ever actually done anything for the common people? Mm -hmm. no. no. Even if they seemingly do good things, it's only for their own political merit. It's just to improve their relationship with the people. Yeah. So as to protect their own political power, as well as prevent any riots. Yes. Right, right. In the decades the CCP has held power, their atrocities have been too numerous to list. They resist God and carry hate in their heart. They want to eliminate God's work by persecuting Christians. Yes. yes. 
This angers both heaven and the people earning God's curses. That's right. right. The CCP brings countless disasters to the people of China. And they have committed unspeakable crimes. They truly are demons reincarnated. Mm -hmm. The CCP says anything they can to seem good, but all their actions contradict this. Right. Yes, they the do. The CCP is truly evil. Why is it that some people now can't clearly see the CCP's evil essence? Because they are so cunning and sinister. Of course, the common man is fooled and deceived. Right. right. The yes. CCP is just a demon that deceives its people. Yeah. Without constant analysis and fellowship, we wouldn't be able to see the CCP's devilish nature and maliciousness. Nor would we see that these satanic philosophies and natures are the root of people lying. Yes. Yes, that's yes. right. That's exactly right. These satanic poisons corrupt us and increase our desire for profit above conscience. All throughout our lives, people could never see how many times we lie and cheat for our reputation and interests. These satanic philosophies truly corrupt us. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Through the revelations of trials and the judgment and chastisement of God's words, we see that mankind is indeed deeply corrupted by Satan, and that our natures are full of cunning and deceit. Even in our belief in God, we have our own intentions and motives. Many people believe in God to satisfy themselves and to enjoy God's grace and blessings, not to gain the truth, escape their satanic dispositions, or live out a life as a true human being. Some people labor for God and even forsake everything for Him. But this is just an exchange for the blessings right. of the kingdom of heaven. This is why when disasters come or they begin to suffer trials, they may rebel and blame God if their desires are unmet. It's all because of man's cunning natures. Right. right. So, resolving our cunning natures is all too important. Yes, incredibly important. Yes, yes it really Thanks is. Be to God. Almighty God has come to express the truth and do the work of judgment in the last days to resolve the problem of mankind's corruption. Yes. This is God's great salvation for mankind. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Thanks be to God. As we experience the judgment in God's words, trials and refinement, we gain some understanding of our satanic natures and cunning dispositions. We see that we have been deeply corrupted by Satan, that our natures are full of selfishness and cunning and that we are filled with Satan's philosophies and toxins. So we begin to despise ourselves, striving to pursue the truth, and we are no longer willing to live by these satanic natures and philosophies. Yes. 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 When we continue to practice God's words, the satanic philosophies within us are reduced. To different degrees, our dispositions change, and we become more honest. That we can have this understanding and change is achieved by experiencing the judgment in God's words. Yes. Right. It is. That really is the Thanks truth. Thanks be to God. That is so true. Yes. God's work of judgment is so important for us. Yes. It is. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. Dad, Absolutely. Pack the books up first. I'm going to check it out. Shin from the Xincheng district was just arrested by the police. Uh, what? You arrested him? The CCP's persecution of religion is getting even worse. Yeah. Even in three self churches, crosses are being torn down and pastors are being arrested. The CCP wants to completely eliminate any religious faith. Right. From now on, we need to be extra cautious and we should have someone always on watch. Yes. 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 Mm. We can have our meeting in peace. There are several brothers and sisters keeping watch outside. Good. Good. Great. Yeah, I feel so much better. Yeah. Let's start the meeting. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Last time, we fellowshiped on aspects of truth regarding how to be an honest person. If anyone still has something they don't understand, we can follow up on it today. Great. Wonderful. I still have some questions. 
about living as an honest person. How do you put it into practice, and how do you resolve the cunning in your hearts? Yeah. Can you discuss your experience on this? Sounds great. Yes. Yeah. Please. I'd like you to discuss that too. Thanks be to God. Then I'll talk about my own experience and understanding. Please. Yes. Great. Right great. Over the years, I've experienced God's judgment and chastisement, as well as some trials and refinement. My cunning intentions and satanic dispositions have been purified to some extent. I'm more honest in my words and actions. And my life disposition has achieved some change. This to me is the salvation of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh -huh. In my first two years believing in Almighty God, I was very enthusiastic and I actively performed all my duties. So much so, I was chosen as a church leader. In those days, I worked on till dusk for the church, watering and supporting my brothers and sisters. And my work began to bear some fruit. Before I knew it, I became arrogant and began to believe I was better than others. I showed off in front of my brothers and sisters to convince them to support and admire me. And I didn't focus on pursuing the truth and dispositional change. I only pursued fame and status, so I lost the work of the Holy Spirit and was replaced. At the time, I felt tormented. I felt I'd lost everything, my reputation, my status and my future, my passion for believing, and God was nearly stripped away. One day, I sat down to read God's word Some people are always waving the flag of the church, no matter what they do. The truth is that this is for their own benefit. That kind of person does not have the right kind of motive. He's crooked and deceitful. And most of the things that he does are to seek his own personal benefit. That kind of person does not pursue loving God. His heart still belongs to Satan and cannot turn toward God. God has no way to obtain that kind of person. How one's fate will work out in the end hinges upon whether he has an honest and blood-red heart, and whether he has a pure soul. If you are someone who is very dishonest, someone with a heart of malice, and someone with an unclean soul, then the record of your fate is certainly in the place where man is punished. If you claim to be very honest, and yet never manage to act in accordance with the truth, or to speak a word of truth, then are you still waiting for God to reward you? Do you still hope for God to regard you as the apple of his eye? Isn't this a preposterous way of thinking? You deceive God in all things. So how can the house of God accommodate one such as you whose hands are unclean? Amen. Mm. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. In God's words of judgment and revelation, I saw that what I had forsaken and expended was a guise for my deceitful intentions. I did what I did to satisfy only myself and my desires of fame and status. To wear a crown and reap the rewards of the kingdom of heaven. Not to be considerate of God's heart and do my duty well. How was I any different than the hypocritical Pharisees or the religious pastors and the religious elders? Right. These people often interpret the Bible for the church, and they appear to be very pious and love God. But in truth, they never exalt or testify God. They don't seek the truth or God's will as it is in the Bible, and they don't guide believers to practice God's words or to follow his commandments. Right. Instead, 
They strive to exalt and testify themselves and make others worship and obey them. Because of this, when God incarnate appears to work, to protect their own status and livelihoods, they wildly resist and condemn God's appearance and work and prevent others from accepting the true way, thereby offending God's disposition. The path they walk is the path of resistance toward God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Lord Jesus accused the Pharisees, saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like to whitewashed sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. These kinds of people appear pious and pretend to love God, but they hide deceit within their hearts. All they do is to satisfy their own desires. They are deceivers of God, using Him, and this offends God's disposition. Thinking of these things filled my heart with terror. I felt unsafe, scared. God is holy and righteous. He loathes evil and does not tolerate us corrupt beings to deceive or resist Him. God wants people to sincerely believe in Him and serve Him in earnest. But I, I enjoyed the care and protection of God and the supply of His words. Yet I didn't expend for God sincerely and I didn't perform my duties well. Instead, I pursued my own interests. I was too cunning. And the depths of my soul had become unclean. But even then, I still wanted people to admire and keep me in their hearts. Completely shameless. I was so disgusted with myself. I really wanted to slap myself. Then and there I swore an oath to God. I would accept his observation and perform my duties in accordance with God's will. And if I ever again pursued fame, and if I deceived him, I beg God to discipline me. Amen. 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 From then on, I began to focus on pursuing the truth and often self-reflected as I performed my duties. When I found cunning intentions, I prayed to God, forsook myself, and consciously began to open up, expose, and analyze my own corruption. Gradually, I no longer suffered the constraints of fame and status. No matter what duty in God's house was arranged for me, or if I had status, no matter how anyone in the church saw me, I normally performed my duties. Thanks Glory to God. God. My heart became pure and honest, and I felt much more free and at ease. Amen. These were all effects of experiencing the judgment in God's word. Thanks be to God. Thanks be Amen. To God. Amen. Amen. Experience like this is wonderful and so practical. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Yes, through this kind of fellowship, we know how to be honest and escape the cunning in our hearts. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Let's read from God's word to better our understanding of the path before us. All okay. Right. Right. Yeah. God says, whenever you do anything, you must examine whether your motivations are right. If you are able to act according to the requirements of God, then your relationship with God is normal. This is the minimum criterion. If, when you examine your motivations, there emerge those that are incorrect, and if you are able to turn your back on them and act according to the words of God, then you will become someone who is right before God, which will show that your relationship with God is normal and that all you do is for the sake of God and not for yourself. Whenever you do or say anything, you must put your heart right, be righteous, and not be led by your emotions or act according to your own will. These are the principles by which believers in God conduct themselves. Amen. Amen.
The most fundamental requirement of man's belief in God is that he have an honest heart and that he fully devote himself and truly obey. What is hardest for man is to provide his whole life in exchange for true belief, through which he can gain the entire truth and fulfill his duty as a creature of God. You can devote your heart and body and all of your genuine love to God. Place them before Him. Be completely obedient toward Him and be absolutely considerate to His will. Not for the flesh, not for family, and not for your personal desires, but for the interests of God's household. In everything, you can take God's words as the principle as the foundation. That way, your intentions and your perspectives will all be in the right place. And you will be someone who gains God's praise before Him. God's words say it so clearly. The key to being an honest person is an honest heart. The Lord Jesus said we should use our heart and honesty to worship God. Looking at it now, only by escaping our cunning nature can we meet God's requirements. Yes. I've been practicing being an honest person according to God's words. Each day, I focus on accepting God's observation and often reflect on myself. When I discover cunning intentions, I pray to God and seek the truth. I analyze myself based on God's word. Through this, I see clearly the root of my state, the satanic philosophies I live by and how it goes against the truth. Why is it actually fallacious and absurd? What dangers and consequences does it bring? When I understand this, I have the motivation to forsake my flesh and practice the truth. I do my duties with truly honest intentions. I don't consider my own reputation, status, or destination, or selfishly satisfy my own desires. I seek only to fulfill the duties of a being created by God and to be considerate of God's heart. Practicing this way for several years, I have actually achieved some results. <sighs> Thanks be to God. My views on belief of God have changed so much, and many of my false intentions and impurities have vanished. I feel much more calm and secure. I revel in the joy and happiness of practicing the truth and being with God. Only those who are honest are truly human, and only in this way can we live in the light openly, uprightly, and generously. Praise God. The fellowship and your experiences, I can't explain how helpful they are right now. Now I have some clarity about how to resolve my cunning intentions, and I have a path to practice. Glory to God. God is the creator, and we are his created beings. It is the right thing to do, believing in God and performing our duties. Whether we're blessed or scourged, whether we have an end or not, we should obey God and be loyal to him. Yes. Just like Job, who was honest, upright, and believed in God without personal intentions. God sent hardships and disasters, but Job obeyed God, never complaining, always glorifying God's name. And in the end, he obtained God's approval and blessings. He appeared to Job and spoke to him in wind, and it was like seeing God face to face. Right. This allows me to see God's righteousness. God delights in and blesses honest people. As believers in God, if we pursue the truth, resolve our cutting intentions, and escape our selfishness, we become honest people. Nothing could be more meaningful. I agree. This experience has taught me so much. From now on, I will be as Job and Peter, and completely hand over my life to God. And no matter the trials to come, I will seek the truth obey God's orchestrations and arrangements, and be an upright and honest person. Sister Chung, a letter from your husband. Someone from the church delivered it. Chung Nua, getting hurt like this has caused me great suffering but I've also learned many lessons. 
Being in the hospital for over a month has given me the time and quiet space to reflect on myself. I've seen how, in the years I've believed in God, I never pursued the truth. Instead, I focused on working, making money, but I didn't make any place for God in my heart. Hey, it's time to go. Okay. Although in the past I supported you in your duties to the church, when things became dangerous, I was afraid for you. I was scared you'd be arrested and tortured. Also that my job and our family would be impacted and suffer as well. So I tried to stop you from doing your duties. I wasn't acting like a believer in God, I was acting like an unbeliever. You could say this accident forced me awake. I've seen what happens in a world without faith, and how vulnerable we are as humans without God's protection. Our lives could be taken from us at any time. But pursuing the truth and gaining it, those are the most meaningful things in life. From now on, I'm willing to pursue the truth, to gain God's salvation. My love, while you're away, devote yourself completely to your duties. Everything at home is okay, so don't worry about us.